Hi everyone, hope you're all ticking your B. Today we've got another real life review and this time it's gonna be on the image transmission unit. That's this one here, yeah, for the Zion Weebill S. So like normal with my reviews, like I say, I'm no expert on any of this stuff. I'm just a normal person like most of you watching these videos. Yeah, I'm gonna have a go with it, show you some of the pros and cons of it and actually get out and show you a real life review of it. Um, we're gonna try the image um, tracking thing on there because apparently it's not as good as everybody says it is, but um, we'll get out and give it a little bit of a go. Plus I'm sure there's um, some of you out there who've been using it or got better ideas on how to use that side of it. But for me, it's the fact that you can actually have all of the pro bits put on there. You know, you can have um, things like um, focus peaking, you can get the histogram to come up on it, and also um, you don't need to have cables connected it to it. So hopefully it's gonna be all right. But one of the first things to think about everybody is I ordered mine and I didn't realize that you had to get an HDMI cable for it. So here's one here from Zion as well. They kindly sent one out to me. All right, um, so if you're gonna reorder yours separately like I did, make sure that you order one of those. I'll leave some links down below if I can find them because they are quite hard to find. So let's get and have a look at what's in the box. So let's see what's in the box. Nicely boxed, as you can see. There's the old label there, it slots out. Ooh, it does look nice, doesn't it? And then, hopefully, obviously, if you've got one of these new, you'll see that these are sealed, just like this. This is the first time I've had a look at it. And inside we've got, let's see, the old instruction manual, which we'll have a bit of a look at in a minute. And a little bit of foam. Ooh. And there she is, quite nicely wrapped up. It's a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. Right, what else have we got in the box then? I would expect these would be all the cables and things. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Oh, they make them more awkward to get into, don't they? Yeah, so we've got quite a few different cables in there. That one, that big bunch of cables and an allen key and some screws in there as well i'm sure they're going to be there for attaching it to the weeble so let's get these open right now we've had a look at what's in the box let's look at how you set it up properly yeah on the gimbal itself and connect the right cables up remembering of course to make sure you got your hdmi one yeah because otherwise it just doesn't work um yeah let's get on with that now Right, that's everything out of the box then. So what you've got there is the micro USB um, cables themselves, the USB-C ones, and then there's the mini USB, and then there's this one here, which is the charging cable. And you've got this one here, which is to connect to the um, Weeble Lab itself, or Weeble S, should I say even. Um, I'm supposed you can connect it to other things because these apparently work as an individual unit, not just with Weeble S. Got the transmitter here and four little screws and the little Allen key. So everything in there for what you need to put together. So again, kit looks really good quality. Um, yeah, let's get it back onto the Weeble S now so we can see what it looks like. Okay, so got a base place to fit now. And yes, that was in the box and I forgot to get it out earlier on. So hopefully you can see that. And it also shows you there's two little lumps there and one that way. And what happens is these two here must go back towards the um, motors. Okay, and the one is facing forward. Before I do that, I played around with this a little bit um, to see the best way to set it all up. And as you can see, it's nice and firm. So hopefully you can see it. If I just zoom out there, all right. What you've got is you've got it laid on its side with a focus wheel up here, okay? And then I've extended the arm around and rotated it around here so it's leaning on this piece, it's nice and firm. It makes it easier to fit. So let's uh, get on with that then. So you'll need two screws, the Allen key that comes with it, all right? And it's really easy to put on. All you gotta do is uh, get that piece there, line him up. And you'll notice there's some blue stuff on there, which I believe is like locking paste, all right? For when you've got them in there, save them uh, coming out. And what I always do is put it in partially, first of all, okay, and take the second one. And then that way you won't over tighten it, okay. There, into the right hole as well, hopefully. And 
and we'll get that one tightened up. So let's get these tightened up. And that's your first step done. It really is this easy. And there goes the phone again. I must remember to turn that off whenever I'm doing these reviews. So let's get that one tightened up as well. Whoop. See, make loads of mistakes, like just like most of us. Never a perfect one in our videos, are they? All right, that's them nice and tight. Give them one last little tweak. All right, and then we'll get on to fitting the actual transmission unit. So, transmission unit. Before I start though, they've got little stickers on here saying about the rotation, maximum 270 degrees. I'm going to leave them on there because for me, um, it was a nice little reminder. It would be nice, I expect they peel off in the end, um, but it would be nice. Yeah, they do peel off. It would be nice if um, they were stuck on there because it would be a nice little reminder, wouldn't it? So, this is really easy. Um, basically, the plate needs to be furthest away there so the antennas are on the outside of the... Um, Tri the tripod it's not a tripod is it a gimbal yeah and then it just slots on nicely like that and it's done and then these will rotate out like that now as always before we go and have a look at this my uninteresting fact for you for all you star wars fans out there do you know that when the first star wars came out in france they were still executing people by the guillotine chopping people's heads off can't believe it Now we're ready to connect the cables up to the gimbal itself. So first of all, take this one here, which is the right angled normal um, micro USB cable. You plug it into the gimbal here. Just like that. And then into the back of the transmission unit just over there. That one's locked in there. And that is so that the transmission unit itself can actually um, talk or communicate with the gimbal and control your camera as well. Uh, these cables here, I'm probably going to cable tie up out of the way, but let's get on with the next cable. Let's connect the camera. So next, you need to connect the proper USB cable, which we're all supplied with it, dependent on your camera. But seeing as this is for Canon EOS RP, I'll be using the USB-C one. So first of all, you take the right angled one and pop that into here. And it's as simple as putting the USB one into the camera, like so. So you may remember from earlier on, I said about the HDMI cable, you have to get the correct one that matches up with your camera. The unit itself has HDMI mini. So I have the Canon EOS R, which is an HDMI mini to HDMI mini. And I had to get that direct from Zion. There'll be a link down below for you to be able to get those if you order this separately. But of course, if you order the Pro Pack, which again, there's a link down below, you will get all these cables included. And as you can see, they fit nicely on there. Um, and don't get interrupted with the uh, motors. But what I will do is cable these together as well. So next we need to connect everything up. So first of all, you need to power on the module. You press and hold this for three seconds. You'll actually see a light come on, a green light there. Let go, and then you'll know that that's actually on. Um, but remember, of course, when you set this all up, you have to rebalance your camera and your gimbal setup because this unit here will add extra different weights to it and so on and so forth. I've done plenty of uh, videos on those if you want to see them, there'll be links down below. And of course, if you want to see the measurements of this one being balanced, then leave a comment down below and I'll see what I can do for you. So I've balanced everything and once you've balanced yours, what you want to do is power on the actual weevil itself. So you press, press the button and start it up. Hopefully you'll see what will happen. So this will come on and also you'll see another light come on here, a little blue light and that actually means that the unit itself is charging itself from the gimbal battery. So now you've powered it up, the first thing you're going to need to do, which is a mistake that a lot of people are doing, is actually set up the gimbal to work with the um, unit itself. Now my light went blue, yours probably isn't blue at the moment unless you've already done this. So you go to the menu, you go down to camera, click across, and as you can see, you've got Sony, Canon, Nikon, so on and so forth there, Panasonic. And right at the bottom there, you will see CCS. You need to select that one. Press the button. Sorry, press it to the side. Let it go through its waiting process. The big tick will come up and then head back to the beginning. And like I said, now you should have all three lights on there. The red one, the green one and the blue one. And then you'll know you've successfully connected the transmitter to your gimbal and camera. 
Okay, the next thing you need to do is actually connect up the camera and switch it on. So it's already connected with the cables. You can see that the transmission unit's on. You see the solid orange light? That actually means that there's no signal going from the HDMI cable to the unit. So if this happens when you switch your camera on, you'll need to check the connections. But this is on now because my camera's switched off. So let's switch them on. And you'll see almost immediately it will flash and then go out. And that means that it's actually connected. Next, we need to open up the app. So next, what you need to do is download the app. If you haven't already done so, you can go to Google or you can go to the iPhone store and you can find it from there. Um, you open that one up, let it all open up. You'll probably get some bits come up at the beginning. This goes straight into it. And all you need to do is scroll over to the Weeble S and press connect now. To start to look for the Weeble. Now some people will get problems with no internet connection and things like that, and that's for this unit here. Okay, the actual image transmitter. But if you do, then all you need to do is go into your settings and switch off mobile data. You enter that one, and we should find it goes straight into the app. Now then, as you can see, mine there. Let's get rid of the light. As you can see, mine's asking for it to join the network. So I'll click OK, as I've already set this one up. And you'll find after a couple of minutes, it should connect up. It'll all fire up and you've got all the different things here on the screen. So to get the image transmission to work, all you need to do is press that one there and you'll see the camera will come through. We'll have a look at some better um, views of this in a bit. So there's loads of different settings on here. Yeah, you play around with them yourselves. There's loads of videos out there, but the ones I like are actually on here. So you've got stabilizer settings, you've got image settings there, which then you can change. You can have all different colors on there. You can have your zebras or zebras as they're called. Yeah, for all the different, so that's getting there where it's too dark. There's nothing too light on here. Hopefully you'll see that in a sec. Okay, all the different things. And I believe if you scroll across to here, yeah, you can even add your own little LUTs. Right. Let's get back into um, seeing how it works as an image transmitter. So last but not least would be the image tracking one. I'm gonna get out in the field and try that as well for you, but just to show you how it works. Down here in the corner, you've got a little icon. You click on that one and you draw a box around the object you want to track. So let's see if that one works. Now that's not very good contrast. It's a very um, good color that's actually mixed in with the deck in here. But let's see what happens. Well, it's managing it pretty well and it stopped there. Don't know where that followed, but you can see it yourself, can't you? And I can't actually see this while I'm doing it. So what we'll do, seeing as the Canon um, lens cap there is a different contrasting colour, we'll try that one out. I'm not sure that the image transmission or image tracking, should I say, is actually going to be a really good feature on here unless you've got some really clear subjects and some good contrast. So let's give that one a try. So again, you touch that one to get rid of the one you've been tracking, touch it again, and then scroll it around that eyepiece. Now the camera itself moves, which you probably didn't see, but that moves around to the actual subject. So let's move this one. Now that seems to be a lot more responsive to me. Seems to be moving around a lot easier and it's lost it. Okay, so in a minute, we'll get out and test it out in the field. Um, we'll give it a little bit of a go for you so you can see it working. I'll try and film it as well with the other camera. Um, we'll put the EOS R, which is over here, onto the um, tripod, which is here, and we'll put the EOS RP, which is here, onto the gimbal so that you can see um, it working and see if it actually does do the image tracking as it's recommended that it can do. But before I do, one top tip for you. Make sure you upgrade all the firmware, not just on the gimbal, but also on the image transmitter, because there's quite a few upgrades that are all updates on the firmware that have come out since that was actually sent out to me. So while I was out and about testing the Osmo Pocket with the AMD filters, and if you're interested in that one, there's a link up there somewhere, or it might be on that side, or it probably definitely be down below. Um, I decided to give the old um, image transmission a test on the uh, Zion Weeble S. It's bloody sunny today, so we'll give it a go and see whether it'll track the car when it's pulling out, and also we'll see if it can track Gizmo while he's running around. We shall see and give it a test, so let's get on with it. Thank you. 
be honest with you, that wasn't very good, was it? So what we're going to do is get back to the house and uh, give Gizmo, uh, there he is over there, but give him a go on the front lawn and see if it tracks a bit better there. See you in a sec. So that was a bit better, wasn't it? However, as Gizmo ran off to the side, it went out of frame. So let's try it on something a bit bigger. In the motor now, and we'll give it a go on there. The good thing with that is because it's wireless, I've actually got the camera in here so I can set it up from there. Let's give it a go. So there you go, pretty ticky boo that time, wasn't it? Add the phone in the car, set it up wirelessly, nice big car on there obviously, so that helped it. And the fact that it was black, nice deep contrast, so I'm sure that definitely helped it out. It's definitely got its uses. Um, it's probably gonna have a firmware update by the time I've done this, so it might make it even better as well as we go along, because it is only in its infancy, I believe. So let's get back in the studio and wrap it up, but I think I'll probably use it as a viewfinder mainly. See you in a sec. Okay, so there you go. Um, to be honest with you, the image track inside of it, I'm sure, and I'm 100% sure, there's loads of videos out there of people being able to use it. It must work better than I've got it to work today. Um, uh, but the other side of it is you've actually seen a real life review of it, haven't you? And the fact that you can get it to work, but it doesn't work as good as things like the DJI drones and stuff like that, that are absolutely awesome at it. Um, I will do a comparison test of the uh, DJI Ronin SC if you're interested, if you are, leave a comment down below and if you know how to make it work better why don't you leave a comment down below as well so um my personal view on it i love the piece of kit because for me it's the fact that you can actually set all those pro settings on there as well and one of the problems i have when i'm out videoing is my exposure so the fact that you can put a zebra on there and um, a zebra can you actually put a zebra on it no you can put the zebra lines on there yeah and the focus peaking and things like that it really will help when you're actually doing um some b-roll and stuff like that so like i said i love this piece of kit i'd love to know what you lot think about it so if you do have any comments whatsoever leave them down below and if you've got any questions on it please leave them down below there's loads of other videos out there as well um looking at this so search the internet and you'll be able to find it the thing is on the zion website itself there's very little um information on there at all got any questions whatsoever again leave them in the comments down below or contact me directly and if you found this useful why don't you hit the subscribe because i'll be doing lots more videos on how to balance different cameras on the um, weeble s plus the ronin sc because there's loads of ch um, channels i've got loads of channels i've only got the one channel haven't i there's loads of videos out there already but there's loads on my channel as well on different balancing with different lenses with the canon eos r and the eos rp so that's it for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers and gone. Right, it's time to get the giveaway done for the ND filters. God, I've got so much gear here to review. Oh, that could be another giveaway there, I think. Anyway, very scientific. As you can see, we've got all the names here in the hat. Give them a big miss up, knock up. Everything else, you can see I'm doing it fairly. There's a fair few entries in this one. So let's pick the first one out for the winner. It is, I have to put the camera down a minute. Just pop that there. So let's see, who is it? We have. Dun, 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 dun. Open up. Random hero spotting. Right. I'll let you into that one it's somebody i know so one i wouldn't let somebody i know win it unless they really really needed them um but also i know he doesn't own an osmo pocket and he did say if he did win to get somebody else so we'll forget about him right he has got a really good channel by the way you should go and check it out there'll be a link down below all right next one let's see Put the camera back up on the tripod and we have Right, that Icelandic guy, that is the most awesome channel out. And funnily enough, if you check the comments down below, he's also said, jokingly, 
I think I should win them, but he doesn't own an Osmo Pocket, so he isn't going to win them either. I can't believe this. Right. Hopefully, I'll have more luck with this one. All right. That down there. Okay, so. Right. Kai. Now then. This guy, I know, definitely wants to win them. So, Kai, that set will be coming out to you. Um, I'll get in touch via email or something like that and um, drop me a line and we'll get them sent out to you. Well done, mate. Um, anyway, if you all want to win something else, make sure you stay tuned because we've got all this gear over here to um, review and we shall see you in a bit. Cheers and gone. <laughs> Coming close, they're all just reaching for a piece of you.